All right, guys, welcome to episode two of WCAG Wednesdays, where each week we walk you through the success criteria for the WCAG 2.0 and 2.1 refresh. In today's episode, we're going to be covering success criteria 1.1.1, non-text content. Non-text content is a level A requirement, which means it's one of the most basic requirements for all accessibility. It reads, all non-text content that is presented to the user has a text alternative that serves an equivalent purpose. We need alt text because we want to be able to give people who use different technologies ways to interpret visual data in the same way. Why do we care about text alternatives? Well, text alternatives can render content in visual, auditory, or tactile formats. So if you have low vision or no vision, then you need that text alternative to be voiced by a screen reader. Text alternatives are compliant for people who use tactile devices, such as braille readers, so that they can understand that non-text content. Also, text alternatives in the form of captioning for those who have low hearing or no hearing allow us to understand context in a video sense. And like most things, there are exceptions. Things like controls, time-based media, tests, sensory experiences, captcha, and things that are purely decorational. But remember, in an HTML environment, when you're using image-based controls, make sure that your alt text describes what that control will do. All right, let's take a look at our Jelly of the Month Club. You can see here that it's a bar chart and it's got a series with some labels in it. We've got a patterned fill and it looks pretty, pretty reasonable. And we see we have some alt text here that says Jelly of the Month Club chart showing trial and paid membership comparison. So here you can see the alt text isn't very descriptive. It does tell you the two different types of items that they're trying to compare. But hopefully in your paragraph text, you've explained and given context to the bar chart. So many times I see bar charts and graphs and charts and infographics all just kind of plopped on the page with no context and they expect the reader to be able to dissect all the different nuances of that chart or graph. It's always best practice to support your graphic with body text. Body text is your main descriptor. The images are there to support your body text. So make sure that you provide enough context so that you don't have to write paragraphs of alt text. Let's dig a little deeper. All right, we can see this new alt text says Jelly of the Month Club chart showing a decrease in trial membership from September to December. So you can see here we've given a little bit more context. We've shown a data range or we've explained a data range that says from September to December and we're trying to show a decrease in trial membership. So we've given the relevant information. Again, your body text should be there to support and give numbers if you need. But the idea behind why you showed the chart in the first place was because you wanted to show that there was a decrease in trial memberships in a certain date range. So this alt text would be appropriate. Let's dig a little farther. Now this one's a mouthful. Jelly of the Month Club membership by month. September, 27.5 million trial memberships and 14.75 million paid memberships. October, 22.5 million. And you can see the alt text just keeps on going through and explaining all the data points. Now this is fine when you have a bar chart or a graph or an infographic that has just a few data sets. Imagine it's a pie chart and maybe it shows four different categories, 30, 30, 30, and 10. So you could say something like a 30% distribution amongst three different categories, list the categories, and then 10% for the remaining category of whatever. So when there are small data sets, it's pretty easy to kind of go through each piece. What if you have 15 different bars? I've seen bar charts that have 15 or 30 data points, and you definitely don't want to go through the experience of listening to every single point along the way. Again, this is where your body text comes into play. You want to make sure that your body text supports the chart. You're giving the user the relevant information that goes along with what it is that you're trying to explain. Just remember that alt text is like a slide. It's a one-way trip from beginning to end. So if you've got a bar chart with 30 different data points and you're walking through each one of them in your alt text and the user maybe misses an item in between in the middle or they wanna go back and reread or re-listen to just a portion, they can't, it's a slide. You start at one end, you go to the other, and if you miss or you wanna pause, you can't. You have to go back, reactivate or refocus that image to get the alt text once again and listen closely. So try to keep that alt text 
two to three sentences with a main point or takeaway. Let's take a look at a different example. Here we have a map of the state of Washington. And in this map, you can see we have a lot of different things we could explain. We could talk about the borders. We could talk about the relevancy of where the ocean is or whatever the case may be. But the alt text in this example simply says interstate map along the Puget Sound of Washington. Maybe that's enough. Maybe all you're trying to explain is the fact that this route goes right along the Puget Sound. Let's take a different look. We look at this new set of alt text, and the alt text says Interstate 5 from Olympia to Bellingham, Washington, traveling through 10 major cities. So in this aspect, we're trying to show that there are 10 cities that you're going to go through because maybe you're trying to explain that this is a scenic route or that this route follows through the series of cities that you talked about in your body text. Again, relevancy is important. Your body text is going to support your images. In this next version of the example, it says northbound Interstate 5 intersects, and then it starts listing all the different cities along this route. Now, maybe this is important. Maybe this is what is needed because you're focusing on each of the cities in your body paragraphs. Remember, it's up to you to develop what the main takeaway is for the image or infographic or charter graph or whatever it is that you're trying to explain. You don't have to go through and label out showing that there are this many tributaries and this main river and that the map is blue and that you've got Canada to the north and Idaho to the east. All of that is, may or may not be relevant. And, and it's up to you to figure out how much of that is supposed to be relayed. Your job, though, is not to relay every single piece of information in the map. It's about giving two to three relevant sentences that give context for the user so they understood why you put that map in there in the first place. All right, let's take a look at another example. Now, this is an example where we were talking about from, this happens to be from the 2016 Disability Statistics Annual Report from the University of New Hampshire. And you can see very clearly here that it shows, figure 20 shows the gap in percentage of employment between those with and without disabilities. This is supported by body text. And you can see in this example, it says, 50.1% for Maine and 47.4% for Kentucky. And in the body text, it goes through and it dictates out a lot of these different data points. So when you have the alt text of map showing distribution of gap of percent employed among people with and without disabilities by state 2015, that's enough. That's all you need because you've supported it with the body text. All right. Hopefully, you've got some good understanding of how you can use these tools to evaluate your specific instance, right? So I thought we'd move on to some alt text don'ts. Don't start with the word graphic of, because depending upon the screen reader you're using, it might say graphic at the beginning or it might say graphic at the end, but either way, it's going to tell the user they're in a graphic already. So you don't wanna hear graphic, graphic of a horse, right? So just get to the meat and potatoes. What is it that you're trying to relay? A horse in a field. So let JAWS or NVDA or whatever screen reader you're using say graphic. Now you might say bar chart or pie chart or infograph to give context to how the data is being presented, but you don't want to start every single one with the word graphic of or picture of, right? Now, we talked about this already. Don't read every single data point. And if you need to use a data point series, then maybe you should include a table. Now, sometimes that doesn't work with the layout, but oftentimes you have control and you're able to include a table. And it also provides alternate content for those with cognitive disability who may not do well with understanding a graphic representation of a data set. Their analytical mind might be more attuned to a table graphic. It's all up to you and your situation. The next one, don't use hard returns and alt text to separate ideas. People using screen readers can't see hard returns inside the alt text. It's not that you can't do it. It's just, it doesn't matter. You're not doing any favors by separating things with alt text. What you need to remember is a period is your long pause and a comma is your short pause. Those are your friends when it comes to alt text. The next item is for PDF creators only because in HTML, we do know that if we wanna set alt text on something as decorative, then we would just use the null double quotes in the alt text, right? But for a PDF, you don't want to do that. PDF UA requires that all items have some tag or another. And when you artifact an item inside PDF, that's giving it a specific designation. But if you just simply assign double quotes to the alt text, that's kind of skirting the issue. And, and you really want to try to avoid that. 
The next item is don't group images with one alt text. You really wanna have one alt text per image. So if you've got two separate images, you don't wanna just have one alt text that says, the first image shows blah, 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 and the second image shows a man in a forest. Right? If you're going to do that, you want them to be one solid image. So in your image processor, you're gonna combine those into one JPEG or one PNG, however you're gonna do it. And then so that there's one alt text for one image, right? The next one is don't use alt text for PDF tables. I see this a lot. Now in HTML, you'll have table summaries or you'll have table descriptions. In a PDF, you might have a table caption or a heading, but you don't need alt text for a PDF. It's not PDF UA required. It's not WCAG required to have alt text for your tables. And the last one here is don't use actual text and alt text together in the same instance. So if you've got an image, don't set actual text and alt text. You just wanna pick one or the other. Actual text is reserved for changing the actual text of an object. So if you had the letters FRA and you wanted to change it so that it said Federal Rights Association, then maybe you would use actual text to, to say that specific phrase rather than the FRA. All right, guys, lastly, I thought we should take a look at some alt text best practices. The first question you wanna ask yourself is does my image add meaning? Should I artifact it or do I give it alt text? If I were to take away this image from my document, would the viewer lose something? And if the answer is yes, then you need to write alt text for it. The other thing you wanna make sure you know is what is the main takeaway for my image? What is that key point that I'm trying to relate to the viewer? Now, sometimes it's a chart or graph that has a trend. Sometimes it's an image that shows a specific feature. We don't have to explain everything to the nth degree. Remember, we want two to three good sentences that give context to non-text objects. All right. Sometimes the best way to represent those charts and graphs is with a table. People with cognitive disabilities might digest that table a lot easier. If you need every one of those data points to be explained, then definitely a table, if it's available, is a great option. The next thing we already covered in the don'ts, but I wanna cover it again because we do not want to start our alt text with the word graphic of or picture of. Of course, if it's a pie chart or infographic or something that has importance that the user understands how that information is being presented, then you would obviously start your alt text there. The next thing is often overlooked. It's the use of non-standard punctuation. Remember we talked about how your periods and commas are your long and short pauses? People often use colons and semicolons and hyphens and all sorts of punctuation inside alt text. The problem with that is, even though it might be grammatically correct, they're gonna get read as colon or bullet or hyphen or dash or uh, semicolon. And no one wants to hear that as they're walking through the text in your alt text. And those using screen readers can interpret non-standard punctuation very differently. All right, the next one is, make sure you support your images and your non-text content with your body text. It's so much better when you can describe what's going on or what you can lead your viewer to the takeaway you want them to have within your body text. And finally, this last one is for those of you who are in the HTML world, you have something that those of us in the PDF world do not, you have long descriptions. And I really wish this was a thing inside a PDF because oftentimes I do want an extended description. So as an HTML editor, you can create a long description that gives them the option to hear the alt text and then if they want to hear something more, they can hear that long description. All right, guys, that's it for this week's episode of WCAG Wednesday, but make sure you stay tuned for next week's episode where we cover success criteria 2.1, time-based media, where we cover things like audio only content and video only content. And what do you do when there's a mix of both of them? But the only way you can stay with me on this journey is to head on over to my YouTube page and hit that subscribe button so you're notified every time I release a new video. And lastly, if you simply can't wait and you've got burning questions about your PDF documents, you can join my Facebook group, PDF Accessibility, where we have some of the best and brightest in PDF accessibility just waiting to answer your questions. All right, guys, this is Dax Castro. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey as we walk through the WCAG 2.0 and 2.1 success criteria. And until next time, happy tagging.